Let's solidify our understanding of the process on how to use factor by grouping method to factor polynomials of the type ax squared plus bx plus c. So first, of course, you have to write it as you see, square term first, then x term, then c term. Then the next thing you will do is, what do you remember from when we were doing algebra tiles? Good, ax squared times c, so that'll give you acx squared. Take the product of first and the last term. And then what? Good. Take the middle term bx and split it into two so that the product of those two terms is acx squared, but the sum is bx. So note that if b is positive, that means greater than 0, then both these two terms, something x and something x that you split it into, have to be negative, or both have to be positive. If the b is smaller than 0, then both of these terms have to have opposite signs. So if the first term is something x is positive, then the other one will have to be negative and vice versa. Next step would be to rewrite our polynomial ax squared plus bx plus c so that it's written as ax squared plus the two split terms plus c. This will allow you to do Note what? that this if allow bx you is a positive what? term, Go then ahead. the two quantities Very that good. you split it into common something x and something x plus both those coefficients common have to be the last two, or both and then have we to can be use factor by grouping. If the bx term you know is that a negative the term, is then not the two correct terms that you split it into when have you to have out different signs from each factor other of the first two, one positive, one whatever negative, whatever that leftover quantity versa. is. That has to be the same as when you pull the greatest common factor out of the last two terms, that quantity left over should be the same. Otherwise, you know you have a teeny little problem, and you have to go back and regroup. Once you have factor by grouping, and you have your factors, it's important that you multiply the two factors that you found together and check that you got the right answer ax squared plus bx plus c. So this whole process of factoring is very important. Every single step, make sure you understand, and we'll do more problems to practice together. All right, so let's do some practice problems. So pause the video here and see if you can apply the process that you just learned to these two problems. And then we'll come back and discuss it together. Go ahead, try it on your own. Assuming you've come back, we have x squared and times 6. So that would be 6x squared. Now what? Two numbers multiply to give you 6, adding to give you 5. Can you think of those? 3 times 2. So 3x plus 2x, add up to give you 5x, multiply to give you 6x squared. Right? So 3x plus 2x is 5x but their multiplication is the 6x squared that we require. So we're going to rewrite that then as x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 6. So now you're going to do factor by grouping first two terms plus last two terms. So you can pull out an x from those two, get x plus 3. Here's a trick you can think of. Once you do the first two terms, you know that this second term has to have x plus 3 in it. So you can put the x plus 3 here and then adjust the outside so that when you distribute this number or term that's here across this addition by using the distributive property, you should get this term here. So you know I need a 2 because only plus 2 times x will give me a plus 2x. So that's one way to make sure you really got it right. And if you try to do that and it's not working, then you know you have a mistake somewhere here in the split. Okay, so the next step would be that, which you know how to do now. So x plus 2, x plus 3 are the factors of that. One thing you might want to think about is this. If the leading coefficient is 1, that means the number that sits in front of x squared, then eventually you'll start to notice a pattern that, okay, 1 times 6 is 6, and 2 plus 3 is 5, and so then x plus 2, x plus 3. So these two numbers multiply to give you 6, add to give you 5. So you start noticing that pattern. 
But until you do that, make sure you go through all the steps of factor by grouping to factor. And remember, this pattern only works that I just told you about if the coefficient is 1. So if the coefficient is not 1, you have to do this. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck. Some of you might be proficient in factor by trial and error method, in which case that's fine. But if you are stuck, just use this method. So do really practice and be proficient in this method. That's the method that we really want you to learn. And what's the name of that method? Just factor by grouping. All right, so 6x squared. And it will be negative because you have a negative 6. So two numbers multiplying to give you negative 6, add to give you negative 1x. So negative 3 and positive 2 will take care of that. So let's rewrite it. OK. Now what? Yes, factor by grouping. Good. First two terms, last two terms. And then rewrite it so that you have pulled out the x minus 3 and you have x plus 2 left. Any questions here, just rewind, go back, make sure you can understand every single step. The split, once you get that split, then you're really home free if you have not made any mistakes here. Again, remember the trick I told you. Pull out the greatest common factor of the first two terms, and then this factor here is going to be this factor here, and then adjust the sign on the outside and the number on the outside, so that when you multiply, distribute throughout, this number over this addition or subtraction that you have, you should get these last two terms here. So an observation, make sure you're always checking your answers by multiplying it out. So once you have your factors, you can use distributive property and multiply out. For example, x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x plus 2 times x is positive 2x. Negative 3x plus 2x is going to give you negative 1x. And positive 2 times negative 3 is going to give you negative 6. So you can do a formize only column and multiply it out to make sure you really got it. You may want to do that in the beginning while you're just learning to factor. All right, let's do some more practice questions, which means you're going to have to pause the video for every question. So let's start with that. Go ahead, try that on your own. Pause the video, please. Remember the steps. Let's just quick review the steps. Factor out, greatest common factor out first. Then whatever remaining trinomial you're left with, use the method you just learned. Factor by grouping, and then complete the factoring. All right, let's take a look at this one here. Assuming you've paused and come back, all of these terms share something. What do they share? They share a t. All right, so let's factor out the t. So now you have x squared plus 5x plus 6. Oh, I would recommend strongly making a forma as only column here so that the work here is clean and tidy. So this x squared plus 5x plus 6, let's put that here and factor it out. So 6x squared is the multiplication. And then once you have that, we want to factor it into two numbers, multiplying to give you 6x squared, adding to give you 5x. So 3x and 2x like we saw before. And so now we're going to rewrite this polynomial. And then what? Between those two terms, you can pull out an x. So you're going to have x plus 3 left. You want x plus 3 here, so 2 here, because plus 2 times x is 2x, plus 2 times plus 3 is plus 6. So then you adjust that term out here. So your factors are x plus 2 times x plus 3 for x squared plus 5x plus 6. So you're going to go here and rewrite it then. This t, remember, is going to carry through because it's already there. You can just drop a factor out. So t times x plus 2 times x plus 3 is the factors of that first one. All right, let's do second one on your own. Pause the video here, see what you can do. Again, remember, first step is always to pull out the greatest common factor. Are you pausing? You see, try it on your own, because if you get wrong now, then when we do it correctly, you'll see where you made mistakes, so you can actually learn from it. All right, so do they share anything in common? What do you think they all share? They share a B. Is there anything else they share? 
one way to check whether they share something is to factor everything. So factor all of these numbers so you can see. Well, they have a 2 in them. All of them have at least a 2 squared in it. So 4, right? So factor out the 4, basically. So they have a 2. And the powers are 3, 2, and 2. So clearly, the power of 2 is going to be the greatest common factor. So 2 squared, or 4, is the greatest common factor. And then also, what? A b, good. All right, so 2 squared. So 4b is the greatest common factor. Write down what's left. You're left with 2 times 3 because we pulled out 2 squared, and this was 2 cubed. So there is a 2 left from here, a 3, and an a squared. A 2 squared is already pulled out. We need a 7, an a, and a b, because a b squared is present here. And here, 2 squared is sitting out, and 5, and b squared, because we only pulled out 1 b. So that's why, what do we have left here now? 4 b times 6 s squared minus 7ab minus 5b squared. So this is a trinomial now that we're going to put to the side here and use our factor by grouping method. So take a look. 6 times negative 5. So negative 30a squared, b squared. Two numbers multiplying to give you negative 30 and adding to give you negative 7. So 10 times 3, negative 10ab plus 3ab. Those, those two together add up to negative 7ab, and those two multiply to give you negative 30a squared b squared. So let's rewrite it. All right, now what? 6 and 10, so you can pull out a 2, and we can pull out an a. So from the first two terms, 2a times 3a is 6a squared. 2a times negative 5b is the negative 10. And then 3ab minus 5b squared. If I wrote the 3a minus 5b, I need a b out here so that when I multiply out, I get these two terms. So my factors are going to be 2a plus b times 3a minus 5b. All right, so let's go back here and put them here. So we have 4b, which is from here, from before. And then this factors are from here which is 2a plus b, 3a minus 5b. That's it. That's all there is to factoring. So it's really not that difficult. You just have to make sure you practice enough and see, start seeing you know, numbers. The trick or the harder part where people might get stuck is right here. Two numbers multiplying to give you that number, adding to give you that number. And when you do enough of it, you will just start to see it in your head. OK? Does it matter whether I write 4b times 2a plus b times 3a minus 5b, or 4b times 3a minus 5b times 2a plus b? What do you think? No, it doesn't matter because multiplication is commutative. Remember, things like that, the y part you need to know. All right, let's try a few more examples then. Go try that on your own. Pause the video and continue. Assuming you've passed and come back. So we can pull out what? A 2, it looks like, across all these. So a 2 is factored out. And then this is what's left, which is 12x squared plus 11x minus 5. So let's go for my as only. 2, 12 times negative 5, negative 60x squared. So we need two numbers giving you addition to be 11 and multiplying together to give you negative 60. If the addition is positive and this is a negative number, we know 1 is positive, 1 is negative, And you need the larger number to be positive, so you get positive 11. So 15 and negative 4. And then we write it. These two terms, you can pull out an x and a 3. So you're going to have 3x times 4x plus 5, because 3x times 4x is 12x squared. 3x times positive 5 is 15x. So I'm going to write the 4x plus 5 here and then decide what to put out here. You can see what times 4x is giving me negative 4x. The only thing that will do is negative 1. So that's why the negative 1 is out here. So 4x plus 5 is the greatest common factor. And so we're going to have 4x plus 5 times the leftover from here is 3x. Leftover here is negative 1. So those are our final factors here then. This 2, remember, this 2 will just carry through. You can't just leave a factor out. 
So 2 times 4x plus 5 times 3x minus 1. All right, let's try this. x is the greatest common factor. And now you have this. A question to you is, just think about it before we do this. Do you think that this process will always give you factors or not? Well, let's see. All right, 8x squared times 1 is going to give you what? Good. Two numbers multiplying to give you 8, adding to give you 20. Do you think that's possible? Well, all the numbers multiplying to give you 8 are what? 1 and 8, which will give you addition to be 9. 4 and 2, which will give you 6. And that's it, isn't it? So the largest addition we can get for numbers that multiply to give you 8 is going to be 9. Uh, so 20 is not possible. So when that happens, you are going to say what? Well, can't really have this happening. And so this is an irreducible polynomial, which means it does not factor anymore. So that's your answer. That's your final answer right there. One more concept of creating a square out of a polynomial is what we will look at. So that's called completing the square, like literally completing the square. So suppose you are given the polynomial x squared plus 6x. So here's x squared, which is a real square, x by x uh, square units, plus 6x. If you want the polynomial to become a square, so then we'll start putting the 6x. So 1, 2, 3. And if I want a square, then half of those would have to go on the bottom. And in order to complete squares, then I have to complete this corner here. So that'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So half of 6, which is 3, and then I had to add a 3 by 3 uh, grid here. So that's the 9, which makes it a perfect square. All right, let's see the next one. Pause the video here and see if you can complete the next one. Here's x squared. We want 4x. Go ahead, pause the video, see what you can do. Very good. Half of 4, so 1, 2, 1, 2. And then you would have to complete this grid, which means in order to complete squares, we have to take this middle number, half of that, which would be 2. 2 squared is 4. Add that here, and that will become x plus 2 squared. So you're literally completing the squares. Well, do you think we can do that even if there's a subtraction? Let's take a look. So let's say x squared minus 10x. How can we visualize that? Here's x squared. Minus means take away. Again, half from the vertically and half horizontally. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're removing that. So this yellow is already removed. But if I start removing horizontally, I'll have this strip here. But this much amount was already removed. So if I want to remove this strip, I'll have to add these back in and then remove it. And then same thing for all of the remaining four. So total, we're removing five. But you have to add these one by one squares that we already had removed back in, that's the only way we're going to be able to remove the green strips. So that means you're adding 5 times 5, 25. So half of negative 10, which is negative 5 squared is 25. And so you will have 25 added, which will give you x minus 5 bracket squared. This blue leftover is x minus 5 times x minus 5 or x minus 5 squared. This method is called completing the squares. All right, let's see how you can use the completing the squares now in this problem. So you are asked if you can take the quadratic polynomial and write it as the leading coefficient, which is the a times some perfect square plus a number, where the a is not 0 and h and k are real numbers. So let's start with the first example. We have 2x squared minus 4x plus 1. So look at the first two terms and factor out a 2. So we'll have x squared minus 2x. And then the plus 1 is still out there. Completing the squares for x squared minus 2x. 
So remember what we did. We took the negative 2, half of that, which would be 2 over 2 squared. So we are adding 2 over 2 squared, which will give us 1 squared or 1. And that creates x squared minus 2x plus 1, which is a perfect square, x minus 1 bracket squared. This negative 2 over 2 squared we had to do because you want to keep the polynomial the same as before. So if we added a number, we had to subtract the same number so that we didn't actually change the original polynomial. So now we have a perfect square, and then this 2 over 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1, so we have minus 1. If you distribute now, the 2 that was sitting out here will get 2 times x minus 1 squared, 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2, and then the original plus 1. And so we have now 2 times x minus 1 bracket squared, negative 2 plus 1 gives you a negative 1. You might wonder where this is going to be used. It's going to be used when we look at graphing of functions or solving quadratic equations. There are many applications. And so completing the squares is going to serve a purpose. So here we have rewritten it. So we have a perfect square times a number. And then we adjust the constant so that when you multiply all this out, you will end up with the original 2x squared minus 4x plus 1. All right, you try part B on your own. Go ahead, pause the video, and see what you can do. Use the exact same process as we used in part A. We'll start you off. We'll factor the 3 out. So you have 3 times x squared plus 4x minus 5. It's 4x because 3 times 4 is 12. Don't forget that. OK, go ahead. Pause the video and see what you can do. OK, assuming you've come back, let's take a look. So unless the coefficient of x squared is 1, we cannot complete squares. So we have 4 over 2 bracket squared, which is 2 squared or 4. But if you add a 4, you have to subtract the same amount. So now we have x plus 2 bracket squared, the red portion here, x squared plus 4x plus 4 over 2 squared, makes a perfect square of x plus 2 bracket squared. Then we had to adjust. So that's the negative 4. And then the minus 5 is still here. So opening the brackets up, we have 3 times x plus 2 bracket squares. 3 times negative 4, which is negative 12, and the original minus 5 is still here. Negative 12 minus the 5 will give you negative 17. Let's try one more. All right. So here we have a negative coefficient. So just remember, when you pull the negative out, so in this case it's negative 1, then you're going to have to adjust the sign on the inside. So it become x squared minus 4x minus 2. So we are going to have x squared minus 4x plus the 4 over 2 bracket squared, which is 2 squared, which means that's 4. And you'll have to subtract the 4. So now we have x minus 2 bracket squared minus 4. That negative distributes, so negative x minus 2 squared. Negative, negative will make it positive 4. And then the minus 2. 4 minus 2 will give you a 2. All right, one more. Let's take a look. So pull out the negative 5. So now we'll have negative 5 times x squared minus 2x. Adjust, so add 2 over 2 bracket squared. Subtract the same amount. So that'll make it x minus 1 bracket squared. And then we had to adjust, so that's the minus 1. Multiply by negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 1 will give you positive 5. And then you're subtracting a 4, which will give you a plus 1. So the advantage of completing the squares is that we can write all quadratic polynomials in this form. The leading coefficient, leading coefficient is the number that sits in front of the highest degree term in a polynomial. So in this case, we're working with quadratic polynomials. So you will have the coefficient of x squared, which in this case is negative 5, times a perfect square. And then the constant, whichever constant happens to be after you adjusted the terms here.